Let's bring in Misty Maris, trial attorney and legal analyst. Um, first of all, what do you make? I mean, obviously, prosecutors are saying, hey, the defense opened the door. They said he was distraught after the shooting of Helena Hutchins. This proves he wasn't, does it? Is it damning? Well, it's going to be damaging to the jury because they're going to hear him being very callous in the wake of this horrific event. But the defense made the argument before the judge that this is a reckless crime, meaning it, nobody's saying uh, that Alec Baldwin acted intentionally in any way. So a statement like that really doesn't speak to his state of mind and is not relevant. Prosecutors, though, saying it was the defense who opened up the door because on cross-examination with the investigator, they were so keenly focused on Alec Baldwin being distraught after this. So it's certainly something the jury is going to hear, and it's painting a different picture of his reaction in the aftermath of this tragedy. Okay. Let, I, I was very struck by the fact that another actor on this set was walking around with a gun as part of his costume that was loaded with a live bullet. How on earth did that happen? I was actually shocked, especially since we sat here at this table and covered the Hannah Gutierrez Reed trial, and we had not heard of this before. Right. And so the fact that this uh, a bullet was in another gun on set, number one, thank goodness there wasn't another tragedy. I know. But number two, it really speaks to the defense and their primary argument, which is the, the issue in this case is how did a live bullet get on the set? How was a live bullet loaded into the gun? And you saw that uh, Alex Spiro made a point of on cross-examination to say, was Alec Baldwin responsible for loading the guns? Would Alec Baldwin have had any uh, responsibility with respect to that or know as a layman the difference between these types of bullets? And the answer was no to all of those. So it just shows it's the shifting of accountability. Yeah. And it's going to be on the armorer and others involved with the props. And that's how Alec Baldwin is, is focused on his defense about how that live bullet actually ended up there. The armorer who is scheduled to take the stand tomorrow, why are prosecutors calling her if she's just going to plead the fifth? Well, this is a little bit of legal maneuvering, Elizabeth. And, and they're calling her and they're, and they're saying that they're going to put her on the stand. Her lawyers, she's absolutely going to plead the fifth. She has an active appeal. Uh, there is a question about which questions can be directed to her fall under her Fifth Amendment privilege, meaning it's only something that can incriminate you. I got to tell you, from her defense attorney perspective, that's everything, even factual assertions. Because yeah, but she has. Her whole defense is that it wasn't my fault. Alec Baldwin was the producer on the movie that hasn't been, that's been ruled ineligible to, to bring that evidence in, that he was not just the star, he was also the producer. Right. But her whole case hinges on blaming him. Right, it does, absolutely. And if she was granted immunity, which the judge said no, then she might have been able to testify freely. But that didn't happen. So she's going to plead the fifth to every question. Now, there's something in the law called unavailable witness. And if a witness is unavailable, it means that hearsay can come in, her prior testimony, her prior statements. My guess is prosecutors are going to put her up there to try and stave off a defense argument that they can bring in a lot of her testimony from the prior trial yeah. and her interrogation, potentially videos or statements. So I think it's a bit of um, legal gamesmanship, if you will. In the meantime, they did have a lot of testimony today of really really sloppy evidence collection after the shooting on that movie set. I mean, over and over again, this crime scene technician was caught having to admit, yeah, well, we didn't check that. I mean, the veracity of this investigation is going down the pipes. The defense is doing a great job. And this huge revelation that there were bullets turned over yeah. after Hannah Gutierrez Reed's trial that were never tested, when the central issue in this case is how the heck did these bullets ever get to the movie set? It's really outstanding. Uh, uh, it's really just mind-boggling. All right, Misty Maris, thanks for making it all make sense for us. Really appreciate it. All right, coming up for us.